this evening. Have your way, O oh God, as we look into the path of truth. Let the entrance of your word bring wisdom, knowledge, obedience, deliverance, revelation of Jesus Christ. Right living unto us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. For those who are yet to come in, Lord, help them to come in on time. We give you glory in all things, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read the text. The text is coming from Luke chapter 19, 2 to 10. Luke chapter 19, 2 to 10. He says, Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector. And he was rich, and he sought to see God, <coughs> but could not because, because of the crowd, for he was a short, of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him. He was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he is also the son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the aim of this Bible study is to discuss the narrow way in the context of a sincere heart of repentance to touch light the attributes of truthful Christian and to encourage believers to stay on the path of truth. Amen. Mecca, is it possible you read the introduction for us? Can you do that? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Our our stu our study today our study text today opens our eyes to the attitude of a faithful person a truthful person. Zacchaeus did not hide his past sinful life. Instead, he confessed them and resolved to change to the path of truth. Not only did Zacchaeus see the error of his ways but also he had a total change of heart. He no longer wanted to live a dishonest life because he came to know and believe in Jesus. In the narrow path, the believer does not live the way he wants. It is the way of truth. Our study guides will reveal to us how we can stay on this path in our Christian race to God's kingdom. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you, Mecca. Okay. In the context of Zacchaeus' story, how can we explain the way of truth to, to an unbeliever? Hmm? 
He says, in the context of Zacchaeus story, how can we explain the way of truth to an unbeliever? So we are going to say, because you are going to read uh, Luke 19, get to 9. And uh, she, she, are you there? And I will read um, John 8.32. Neka, you read for us okay. Hebrew 12.2. She, are you there? Yes. Okay, read John 8.32. Neka, you read uh, Hebrew 12.2. Uh, what we are looking at now is in the context of Zacchaeus' story, which we read, how can you explain the way of truth to an unbeliever? We know that an unbeliever is somebody who doesn't know the truth, doesn't know Jesus. Okay, so I can say you read, you start with Luke 19. I'm reading that, um, Luke 19, 8 to 9. I'm reading from New International Version. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because this is of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So from what cycle is there read? We want to know how can you explain the way of truth to an unbeliever? So we can see actually what happened here. Uh, Jesus was walking by and there was crowd and there was a lot of people. And uh, Zacchaeus desired to see Jesus. Well, he was a short man. He was of short stature. So to insist on seeing him, he had to climb on top of the tree. To his utter amazement, Jesus said today, I will stay in your house. Could you imagine that? He was there in the tree to have a glance of this popular man. All of a sudden, the word came to him. Hey, young man, today I'll be in your house. And now the point I'm trying to make is after Jesus made this statement. If you look at verse 7, verse 7 says, But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be, with, to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. How often... People judge, not actually knowing our personal relationship with Jesus. So the question here is, how can you explain the way of the truth to an unbeliever? The way to explain to an unbeliever the way of the truth is exactly what Zacchaeus did. What did Zacchaeus do? He stood and said to the Lord, and to the hearing of those who are who were unbelievers, he said, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. He cares for the poor. And I have taken anything, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false, I restore it fourfold. So Zacchaeus is showing here that it is good for a non-believer, if he's a thief, you are not supposed to take somebody's thing. And if you are an unbeliever, it's good to care for the poor around you and take care of them. And so, from the way Zacchaeus was portraying himself, he spoke volume to people who were already accusing Jesus of going to stay 
to a sinner. And so from the attitude of Zacchaeus, we see how we as Christians should live. There is something he says also. He said, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore it. I restore it. I don't keep it. I don't keep what doesn't belong to me. Today we know that is the, the way of life for people who don't know Christ. They don't have fear of God. They begin to do things without thinking about how does the next person feel. What you have, does it belong to you? At times, married people go after other women. And uh, some women go after men. This is an unbelieving type of life. We need to restore anything which you have done wrong. And so that was a surprise to people who were accusing Jesus of going to be with the sinner. The person they were calling a sinner is already walking to be saved. And Jesus said, today, salvation has come to this house because he is also the son of Abraham. For the son of man... I have something to... to, to yeah, I know, I know. To... I know. For the son of man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Okay. Go on. My question um, from what... Um, looking at this, you will also assume that Zacchaeus um, hasn't completely been a believer and then i guess um so that was why people knew that why would jesus go in to dine with an unbeliever but then i'm sure he must have had the word had the word and he was pricked and then that was when he made himself available to confess and said that he was going to restore everything he had stolen or he had taken he was a tax collector you know what tax collectors have been doing so um i was thinking he was he was pricked or the holy spirit touched him through the word and then he came out in the open to say that, you know, I'm confessing. So what I'm getting from that also, that when we, a way of experiencing that if people are not Christians, that it, it, it's okay to come out when you are touched or when the word has reached you and touched you, to not hide. Zacchaeus did not hide. Even climbed up to the height where everybody will see him. And then he barely opened himself and confessed and said, you know, talk about restitution. So if you are living a life that is not good, that's when you confess that I'm going to change from this life and live, begin to live a better life. You know, as, as a Christ, as unbelievers, don't hide your sin. Acknowledge your sin that you're a sinner, first of all. Confess it and, you know, make an open declaration and say you're going to restore. Then you can do it on your own. Go know, know where you have done wrong. Go and make amends. And then... Uh, and then you will be restored. Instead of hiding your sins and being ashamed of coming out in the open and declaring that you're a sinner and you want salvation. That was, for more than I was just thinking that Zacchaeus hasn't totally been a Christian and was just touched by the word and came out in the open to declare in that, that even whatever he has taken, that he was going to make restitution and then live rightly afterwards. Well, I have, th I have this to say. Zacchaeus, Perhaps he might have heard about Jesus quite true, and I don't see him. And climbing up to the tree that he wants to see his face or something like that, want to see him. But to his surprise, Jesus called him by name. How did he, how did Jesus know him? As God, he knew him because uh, he is created. He is a creator or is with the God himself. He knows everyone by name. So he came there so to his surprise. He was called by name and asked to come down. So that was a prick. How did this man know me? How did he understand who I am? And then he had to confess. Okay. So it's equivalent to the man on the cross who the other person reviled to Jesus, but he said, the other man said, why, why are you not ashamed of what you have done? 
we okay. are being anyway go ahead sir okay so what i want to thank you for your contributions what i want to bring here is this first um Zacchaeus confession was not happening in the immediate. I will read it again. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. As he didn't say, I will start giving half of my goods to the poor. He said, And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. This is a life he has already started living. And I believe that this life he started living was what prompted him when he heard that Jesus was coming that way. He ran ahead and climbed the tree and started looking. And it's like what happened in Acts of Apostles to, what's the name of this man the angel met? Do you remember? Oh. Which man? The man that uh, dreamt an angel visited him and told him that his uh, memoriam has been received by God. Cornelius. Cornelius, Cornelius, thank you. So Cornelius was living a righteous life. And all of a sudden, one day, an angel appeared and told Cornelius, you know what? The life you are living, God knows about it. And he's saying today, you need to hear from Peter. And so I believe that people saw Colenus as a tax collector and they, 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 they wrote him off as a sinner, but and even accused Jesus that you are a prophet and you are going to dine with a sinner. And what Colenus said confirmed that Jesus knew what he was doing. And Colenus said, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore for food. So there is a change in life. Now, one thing we will see here is that this is a man who is desiring to follow Christ, and there is something he's already doing. What is he doing? Restitution. He's already into restitution, restoring what he stole. I don't know how many years he has been a tax collector but he's already making a man. He's already make, making his way. And it is not by accident that Jesus remembered him and said, Amy, come down from there. I'm coming to your house today. Because you already know that that guy up there is already walking in the remote, trying to be a good person. And God's presence came to his house that day. And salvation came. The same way salvation came, when the angel came to Colenus and said, send some people to Joppa. Peter will speak to you. So God knows the way to reach to us when we are out there trying to, trying to uh, know God one way or the other. He, he always reaches out to us. Praise the Lord. So I, I took time that we took time to explain this because that forms the bulk of the message of this Bible study. So whatever you are doing in your little place, God is seeing you. And one day, he will bring a reward. He will bring, he will bring a difference. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, who is reading the next one? Uh, John chapter 832. To you. If you are reading, you are mute. John 8, 32. It says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, the question is, how can you explain the way of the truth to an unbeliever from what you read?
Yes, from what she read, we can tell an unbeliever there is truth. 99.999% is not enough to be truth, except it is 100%. So we, you shall know the truth, and it's only the truth that brings salvation. It's like what our food for thought said, if it is not the truth, it is not the way. The truth must be complete, it's not half-baked. The truth must be complete, it's not half-baked. Okay, Neka, bring it. Hebrew, um, Hebrew, Hebrew 12, um, verse two. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So from what she read, the question is, how can you explain the way of truth to an unbeliever, somebody who doesn't know Jesus. Okay, from what she read, the only message you have for the unbeliever is to look unto Jesus. Don't look unto me as the pastor. Look unto Jesus, look unto the cross. It is all about Christ. Yes, um, Danjima called me this evening while I was here and was telling me how he is writing his book and uh, how he has uh, he mentioned me in the book, how helpful I have been with him. And I told him, Danjima, don't get me into trouble. And he said, Pastor, what do you mean? I said, whatever you are writing is about Jesus, not about me. Make sure you understand that. We are serving a jealous God. He doesn't want to share his glory. So the focus of whatever we direct people to is know Jesus. Come to know Jesus. Don't come to know Brother Chuka. I am nobody. Come to know Jesus. Bible said, uh, from what uh, our sister read, it says, looking unto Jesus. That's where we look unto. Many people in the church don't look unto Jesus. And that is why when they have misunderstanding with the next person, they refuse to take a Holy Communion or they refuse to they leave the church or they begin to do one thing or the other. When you are looking unto Jesus, you are, in, you are not in the church because of anybody. You are in the church because you want to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Bible said, that person is the author and finisher of our faith. Bible said, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's the person you should be looking unto. Nobody else. Nobody else. Praise the Lord. We are going to number two. What is the biblical instruction concerning the truth for Christians in Ephesians 4, 21 to 25? I'll call on Sister Glad to read that for us. So when she reads that, we'll be looking at what is the biblical instruction concerning the truth for the Christians. What is the truth from what she will read? Uh, Ephesians 4, 21 to 25. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, 
which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. So, so what we want to discuss there is what is the biblical instruction concerning the truth for Christians? I think the instructions we have here is that we should throw away our sinful nature and the, the old life or corrupted life we are living before. As, um, uh, as Zacchaeus did, the Holy Spirit has preached him that or show him his sins. That is why he confessed his sins to the Lord. So when we throw away our sinful or our old nature of life, the Spirit of God will show us the truth and the way that we should follow and serve God. Wonderful. Mama, thank you so much. So I'm going to add to what Mama said. He starts by saying, indeed, you have had him. If indeed you have had him, condition. If indeed you have had him, if you have had Jesus, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, this is the only condition that can bring the change. If indeed we have had him, and have been taught the truth. Therefore, 22 says, put off concerning your former conduct. Like Mama said, the former conduct of Zacchaeus was cheating. People have different former conducts. Somebody could be a womanizer. Somebody could be an idol worship. He says, the old man which grows corrupt according to the sinful lust. When we put it off, something will happen. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind a new birth, and 24 says, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. This is what will transpire if we want to live in righteousness, in truth as a Christians. These things must take place in us. One, we must have had the word and how can we hear the word? We come to Bible study. We go to the church and sit down and be taught. Now, Bible says in, in, uh, in Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12, it says, the word of God is alive and active and sharper than two edged swords. It says it is able to cut across bone and marrow. Is the sharpness of the word of God which we had and thought that brings, removes our old conduct, that makes us to distance ourselves from deceitful lust, that helps our spirit to be renewed and give us a new mind, and which results in verse 24, we put on the new man which was created according to God in righteousness and holiness. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Any contribution? Any question? Okay. Let's go to three. What are the challenges that keep us from the path of the truth? What are the challenges that keep us from the path of truth as Christians in our generation? Um, discuss in context with Mark 6, 16 to 18. Um, read Mark 6, 16 to 18 for us. Acts 8, 1 to 3. Mama, you read Acts 8, 1 to 3 for us. Acts chapter 3, 1 to 3. Lady Akezia, you are going to read Acts 8, 1 to 3. She, you read Mark 6, 18, 16 to 18. So the question is, what are the challenges that keep us from the path of the truth? As Christians, there are challenges that come our way now and then and uh, become a hiccup to our Christian journey or pilgrimage. So Mark 6, 16 to 18 says, But when Herod had thereof, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John, and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have your brother's wife. What's your question? Okay, from what she read, our question is, what are the challenges that keep us from the paths of the truth as Christians? I'm thinking also one of them is fear, um, compromise fear. I know, like what we saw, John was not afraid of the King Herod. He wasn't afraid of him. He told him exactly what he did. But us as Christians, if some, if if it was like the governor or you know who would you would think how would I go to the governor to tell him that what he did was wrong, or how would I go to the president? that we have now to say what is doing what is wrong, you know. So the fear could be part of it, compromise too, you know. And then those things are, are, are a challenge to us as Christians. If you don't openly say the truth or rebuke or correct, even even in the church, you know, when I'm, I'm giving, when I'm talking, I'm talking about people, you know, outside of, if, I, if I'm talking within, sometimes it's hard for us to, Say some uh, our neighbor, our colleague, or somebody in the church or in the community, you know, you know, this is wrong. You can't do this, you, you, you know, or uh, this is sin before God. If you do this, this is what they will attract. So is that fear of person, or you want to feel belong? You want you want them to still, you know, have you as their friend or belong to their community or their gang, and so you don't want to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. so, but it wasn't so with John. John was outrightly told. Uh, I wrote that what he did was wrong. So I would say fear or, you know, wanting to feel belonged. You don't want people to jeer at you or make fun of you. So you keep your mouth shut. You don't want to say the truth. Thank you so much. Any other contribution? It could be likened with what uh, Paul said to Peter. He told him by faith that the way he's following was wrong. Uh, John here manifested his faith by telling Herod who is king that he was wrong in marrying his uh, brother's wife, that it's unlawful. So uh, that ends him imprisonment. And uh, that does, uh, it doesn't bother him because he has already said the truth. So the truth is what matters that uh, we should tell people, no matter the consequence. So, yeah, the consequences also that we face sometimes makes us afraid of them. That's one of the challenges. 
you know, like if we're going to be put in prison, are we going to be killed or, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Any other contribution? Uh, Nick, I would like you to read Second Timothy 1.7 to us. Second Timothy 1.7. <sighs> Somebody still has to read Acts, right? Yeah, we are going. To, we are coming to that. We are still in the one we just discussed. Second Timothy, one seven. Or well, whoever finds it first, I think Neka is with David. Whoever finds it first can read. Second Timothy one seven says, "God gave us His Spirit." And the spirit doesn't make us weak and fearful. Instead, the spirit gives us power and love. He helps us control ourselves. Um, if I read King James, King James says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh, living trans, New Living Translation says, God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but power, love, and self-discipline. So as Christians, we have to be bold like John the Baptist. If we, if we do not walk in the path of boldness, the world will bow, bow our Christianity out of us. It could come from our friends, it could come from our wives, it could come from our husbands. God has not given us a spirit of fear but that of sound mind. Praise the Lord. Okay. Who is reading the next one? Acts 8, 1 to 3. Uh, oh. yeah. Acts 8, verse 1 and 2, 3 says, Saul was one of the witnesses and he agreed completely with the killing of Stephen. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem and all the believers except the apostles were scattered through the regions of Judea and the Samaria. Some devoted, devout men came and they buried Stephen with great mourning. But so one to three. One to three. Yeah, one to three. That's that's what he's re she's reading. But so was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging all both men and women to throw them into prison. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So from, so from what Mama read, what are the challenges that keep us from the part of the truth as Christians? Persecution. 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 Many people have left the church because of persecution. And I want to say outright that stronger persecution is on the way. And I believe that God is allowing this persecution to use it to separate the word from the word. Who can finish my word? Ah. The, chaff, the chaff from the green. Weed from the thorn. Whatever, any way you put it. That's the way I'm seeing the persecution that is going to come very soon. Many people will stop going to church. I don't want to die. And that means, mm. and that means they prefer, they are afraid of the one who kills the body or cannot kill the soul. Who are we supposed to be afraid of? The one who can kill the body and the soul. And throw it to him. Exactly. 
So watch out, watch out for things that will happen very soon in our generation that will empty the church. Stand firm. Mm -hmm. God will use it to separate the sheep from the goats. That is what is going on. Don't say, why is God allowing many Christians to die? He knows what he's doing. It's divine. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Persecution can make us lose uh -huh. our salvation. Okay, let's go to four. Is it three? Uh -huh. Three. Okay, four. What are the measures of assessing those on the path of the truth? What are the measures of assessing those on the path of the truth? Um, Saike, so you are going to read Psalm 15, 1 to 3. Sister Glad, you read Psalm 24, 3 to 5. And uh, Sister Neka, you read John 14, 6. Psalm 15, 1 to 3 says, Lord, who may dwell in your secret tent, who may live in your holy mountain, the one whose work is blameless, who does what is right, righteous, who speaks the truth from their hearts, whose tongues utter no slander, who does not wrong to a neighbor and cast those law on others. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So from what I can hear it, um, ah. What are the measures of assessing those on the path of the truth? Ah. 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 Those that walk blameless, according what? to what they are. Those that walk in blameless, walk blameless. Okay, holy. And uh, the right. Righteous. The righteous. And speak the truth. Okay. With their, from their hearts, and they do not use their tongues to do to cause or to slander others. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. So these are the only people that can appear and dwell in the holy hill. I will see holy hill as God's presence. So let's prepare ourselves and walk in righteousness, walk uprightly, uh, speak the truth from our heart, and not live in double standard, but biting with our tongues and things like that. Okay, who is reading the next one? It's me. Okay. Psalm 24, verse 3 to 5. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity or sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Wow. Yeah. From what she read, what are the measures or yardstick for assessing those on the path of truth? And should be clean and pure heart. Those with clean hands and pure hearts. Okay. And trust in, and does not trust or go to an idol. Okay. Or swear, or swear falsely. Okay. And are not vain. What do you say, Sister Glad? And are not vain. And are not vain. Okay. They are not deceitful. Okay. Now, what do we understand by the hill of the Lord? And in uh, in chapter fifteen, 
in the last one we read said call it holy hill god's presence god's presence god's presence yeah. god's presence yeah. god's presence okay who is reading john 14 6. john 14 6. jesus said to him i am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except by me. Okay. From what you read, Neka, um, what are the yardstick to assess those on the part of the truth? We we'll have to uh, understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's the only way we can be saved. Amen. Amen. We have to understand that those who are following the way of Jesus is the way. If we look at all the prophets, all the leaders in different religion, nobody dared mm -hmm. to say he is the way. They always humble themselves and say they are one of the way. But Jesus was bold to say, I am the only way the truth and the life. Nobody can come unto my father except through me. And his father confirmed that during his baptism. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well, mm -hmm. I'm well pleased. Pleased. Okay? pleased. During the Mount of Transfiguration, um, Paul, uh, Peter, and John didn't get it. They were asking that uh, three boots be built. One for Elisha, one for Moses, and one for Jesus. God had it and said, no, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased, listening to him. And when they opened their eye, the only person they saw was Jesus. So that <laughs> message we have to preach. And that is our belief. And that is what the whole world yields to with time. Nick, I'll have you to read the conclusion, read food for thought, and read memory verse, and also give us a closing prayer. I've given you a lot to do this evening. Go for it. Conclusion. Only the truth in Christ can set us free from the bondage of Satan and sin. When Zacchaeus truthfully confessed his sinful past, he was set free. Therefore, standing on and for the truth for a Christian should not be an option, but the norm. Put for thought. If it is not the truth, it is not the way. Memory verse. John 8 verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. 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 Oh, the chiozo, where nenu wa the chiozo. Oh, the chosen, where a nanu, where you chosen. Nani Jesus, Nani Jesus, Nani Yagi, Bobby, in Jesus' name. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. almighty and everlasting Father, King of Kings, the I am that I am, the immortal and the invisible God, Father, we worship you. Father, we thank you for a great moment like this, O God. Father, we thank you for your words, O Lord. Father, we thank you, O God, for you have made it possible for us to understand that you are the truth and the way, O God. Father, King of glory, O Lord, almighty and everlasting Father, King of kings, O God, the omnipotent and the omnipresent God, Father, we worship you. This day, O Lord, I acknowledge you as my Savior, O God. Father, we thank you, O God, for the words which has proceeded from your Bible, O God. 
Father, King of glory, I thank you, O God, for the gift of life, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Neka. God bless you for, and God bless all of you for coming to participate in 